As you watch this teaching, I would like to ask you to please subscribe, like, and comment so more people can see it. My name is Rick Renner, and today I'm standing outside the walls of the Andronikov Monastery in Moscow. This is one of the most ancient parts of Moscow. Moscow is such an ancient city and people come from around the world to visit the city of Moscow and God blessed me and my family and our ministry by putting this here in this monumental historical city. But the oldest part of Moscow was the Kremlin. But if you venture outside of the Kremlin into the rest of the city, you will come to this building, which is the oldest standing building in the city of Moscow outside the Kremlin. It was built in 1357. Isn't that amazing? And it was built to be a monastery, and it served as a monastery for hundreds of years. It withstood fires that went through the city of Moscow, invasions, raids, plagues, diseases, even the invasion of Napoleon in 1812. But finally, at the end of the Bolshevik Revolution, the Russian Revolution, in 1917, this monastery was officially closed because religion became illegal. It was an anti-God regime. And in 1980, they turned this into a shooting gallery. It was a concentration camp. Those who disagreed with the government were housed here. Those who were considered to be political opponents were incarcerated here. And from 1918 to 1922, this became a place of mass executions. To this day, no one knows how many people were executed behind these walls. And finally, in 1991, it was given back to the Russian Orthodox Church, and today it is once again a working monastery, it is a museum, it is a church, and it houses some of the most fabulous Russian icons of the whole history of the Russian Orthodox Church. But from 1918 to 1922, this was a place of horrible, horrible oppression. Oppression is a terrible thing. There are many levels of oppression. There's political oppression, there's spiritual oppression, there's mental oppression, spiritual oppression, so many different kinds of oppression. What does the Bible tell us about oppression? The Bible tells us in Acts 10, 38, Jesus healed those that were oppressed of the devil. What does that word oppressed mean? And if you're oppressed, or you know someone who is oppressed, how can they be set free? That is what I'm gonna to talk to you about today. Stay tuned for a teaching you can trust, a message that will inspire, strengthen, and equip you with vital insights and understanding from the Word of God. Here is Rick. Hey friend, welcome to today's program. I've been waiting for you. And today we're gonna to dive back into our subject about healing the minds and emotions of the oppressed. Do you feel like you're dealing with oppression? Or maybe you know someone that's dealing with oppression. Maybe it's a friend. Maybe it's someone in your family or a friend at church. What can you do to help set them free? That's what this series is about. And I'm offering you my brand new series called Healing the Mind and Emotions of the Oppressed. It's just five parts, but it is packed and it will really help you. And it comes with a great study guide together. These are just dynamite. We're also offering you right now my daily devotionals called Sparkling Gems from the Greek, number one, and Sparkling Gems from the Greek, volume two. Both of these are filled with a thousand Greek word studies. This one has a thousand, this one has a thousand, and it's not just a daily devotional, it's really a resource. In the back of both of these, there's an index of all the Greek words, all the scriptures that are covered in both of these volumes. It is just really a treasure. That's why we call it Sparkling Gems from the Greek. But I want to encourage you to order your copy today, and it would be a great gift to give somebody else. You don't have to order both, or you can order both, but go online or call us now to place your order. And if you're a partner, I want to say thank you. You're helping us to take this teaching to people all over the world that are crying for somebody to bring them the teaching of the Bible. Right from your home, you can make a difference in someone else's life. When you become a financial partner with our ministry, you're enabling the verse-by-verse -verse teaching of the Bible to go to people that are famished for the Word of God. And when you become a partner, we immediately send you a package of books 
as our way of saying thank you and welcome to our partner family. But today, we're going to return to our subject, healing the mind and emotions of the oppressed. In the last program, we covered the subject, what is oppression? Today, we're going to see the various levels of oppression. Now, I have my Bible. I hope you have yours. But let's go back to Acts chapter 10, verse 38. But I want to begin again by describing what is oppression. Oppression is not depression. Depression can be caused by disappointment, fatigue, stress, schedule, diet, and usually depression can be remedied by taking a day off or getting into a better environment or eating differently or even taking medication. But oppression is something else entirely. Oppression is an exterior force that comes against you Oppression is spiritual. Here is the meaning of the word oppression. It is the exercise of authority or power that is burdensome, cruel, and unjust. The etymology of oppression tells us here's what the word means. It means to press upon, to press against, to overburden, to weigh down, to overwhelm, to overpower, to burden with cruel, unjust, or unreasonable restraints, to treat with severity, to oppress, afflict, crush, put down, smother, subdue, or torment. So if you oppress, something is tormenting you. There's an exterior force that's pressing against you emotionally or spiritually. It's trying to submit to, to subdue you. It's trying to smother you. It's a very spiritual force. And the synonyms for oppression would include abuse, Brutality, coercion, compulsion, conquering, control, cruelty, depotism, dictatorship, domination, force, harshness, harassment. Have you ever been harassed in your thoughts? Hardness, injustice, an iron hand that's trying to rule you spiritually, maltreatment, overthrowing, repression, suffering, severity, subjugation, torment, or tyranny. And we find this word oppression in Acts chapter 10, verse 38 where Peter is preaching, and Peter says, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing all that were, here it is, oppressed of the devil. So now we find that oppression really comes from the devil. That is the exterior pressure, trying to subdue, trying to smother, trying to dominate, to rule you like a tyrant. The Bible calls it oppression of the devil. Spiritual oppression comes from the devil. And today we're going to identify the levels of oppression that a person can experience in his or her life. But what about this word oppression in Acts chapter 10, verse 38? The word oppression is a compound of two Greek words, the word kata, which carries the idea of domination. The word dunamis, which is the word for power, but when you compound the two words together, it forms a very long Greek word which pictures the oppressive power of a wicked tyrant, one who rules over and cruelly tyrannizes his subjects, one who is bullying, one who rules with cruelty, depotism, dictatorship, oppressiveness, or tyranny. And Peter tells us the real tyrant is the devil. Even the word devil is important because the word devil tells us how he gets this hold in people's lives. The word devil is the Greek word diabolos. The word diabolos is one who repetitiously strikes until successfully penetrating an object to ruin it, to affect it, or to take it captive. It means to slander, accuse, or defame, to penetrate by continuous assault. And here's what the devil does. He comes with his lies and he begins pounding a person's mind or pounding a person's emotions. Diabolos, he's a devil. He's striking repetitiously, continuously striking and striking and striking and striking until finally he wears the person down and begins to penetrate a hole into their mind or their emotions. And then he floods their mind with his lies and he takes them captive. And from that point forward, he rules them like a tyrant. Now, in the last program, I gave you my testimony about how that almost happened to me when I was a young man. It was aborted because I received the baptism in the Holy Spirit. But I understand the levels of oppression 
because I went through it, and today I want to identify for you seven levels of oppression. If you have something to write with, write these down. Level number one, a personal attack against the mind and emotions. When the devil begins to speak to a person's mind, Remember, he is a diabolos. He's one that is striking and striking and striking the mind. This is what happened to me when I was a young man, when the devil said to me, you're a failure, you're a freak, there's something wrong about you, you're stupid. The devil striking my mind and striking my mind and striking my mind from a very young age, he pinpointed me, he targeted me, and his intention was to penetrate my mind to get access into my mind, into my emotions, and into my believing system, and then to take me down. But stage number one, it begins with a personal attack. Stage number two, reinforcements arrive huh, to support the mental and emotional attack. What do I mean by reinforcements? Here's what I mean. The devil brings in people to confirm what you are inwardly hearing. In my case, particularly, I thought I was a failure at sports and there was something wrong with me. So guess what? When I was a young boy, I had a coach in baseball who mocked me publicly, told me I was stupid, told me I was a failure. I was already feeling that. You see, this is what the devil does. He brings in reinforcements to support what you're already hearing. I was already hearing from the devil that I was a failure, that I was stupid, that I was not like other guys. I didn't understand it was a de devilish attack because nobody had taught me, but that was the attack. Then the devil brought in reinforcements who began to tell me exactly what I was already hearing by myself in my mind. So number two, the devil brings in reinforcements. Number three, are you ready? Life experiences and disappointments show up to fortify the lie. Experience after experience in my life told me that what I was believing and what I was hearing was the truth. I was not doing well in math. I was not doing well in English. Isn't that amazing? Because today I write book after book after book, and I truly believe the devil knew I was going to write books. I think the devil knew the call of God on my life, and that's why he was trying to sabotage me. First of all, he attacked me. Then he brought in reinforcements to reinforce the lie that I was already hearing in my mind. And then I had life experiences that were disappointing and they seemed to fortify what I was already feeling, what I was already hearing. Number four, influential voices regretfully bolster the intensity of the attack. When I got into the ninth grade, for example, I had a teacher who didn't like my dad. I had never done anything wrong to that teacher. My first day in that class, I just showed up. That's all. I sat in my chair. She called the roll. She said, Ricky Renner. I said, here. She said, is your father Ronald Renner? I said, yes. She remembered my father from decades earlier, and she didn't like my father. And when she found out that I was his son, she said, any son of Ronald Renner is stupid, and in this class, your name will be stupid, stupid, stupid Renner. And every day when she called the roll, she called me stupid. She called everybody else by their name. But when she came to me, she said, stupid Renner. And guess what I said here? Because that was my name in her class. An influential voice was now speaking to me saying exactly the same thing that the devil was saying to me. It was reinforcing the intensity of the attack. And do you know what else happened to that year? It's amazing. First of all, all the students thought it was funny. So now all the students are calling me stupid. This attack is really being bolstered by a teacher. Now all the students who think it's funny and they're all calling me stupid. And that year we had job placement tests. And I took my job placement test. And they called me in for my interview after I took my test to tell me how I should plan my future education. And do you know what those two counselors said to me? I'll never forget it. If you're a counselor, be very careful what you say to young people. If you're a parent, be very careful what you say to your children. Those job placement counselors said to me, Ricky, you have no future. Mentally, you don't have what's needed to go to college or have higher levels of education, we would encourage you to think about digging ditches or maybe helping to build roads, doing something manual, because mentally you will never be able to handle higher levels of education. Me, 
Can you imagine telling me that of all people? But you see, the devil was trying to bolster the intensity of the attack. He had brought in influential voices, a teacher. He had brought all those students who were now calling me stupid, now brought in two job placement counselors. All of this together was bolstering the intensity of the attack. The devil was speaking to me personally. Life experiences were confirming what I felt. Reinforcements had come in, and now influential voices were confirming the lie that I was hearing really was the truth. Stage number five. Are you ready for stage number five? Negative faith is released in the lie working in the mind and emotions. Jesus clearly said, whatever you believe is what you receive. And you see the devil's purpose is to inundate your mind with a lie until you hear it and hear it and hear it and hear it and hear it. And the lie begins to become truth to you. You begin to believe it. You begin to believe that you're stupid. You begin to believe that you're a failure. You begin to believe that there's something wrong with you. And what you believe, your faith will empower to become a reality. It is so important what you believe. If you believe a lie, that lie will become your reality. If you believe the truth, the truth will become your reality. Whatever you believe becomes your reality. And if you release a negative faith in a lie, you will empower that lie. And that leads us to stage number six. When the lie leaves the mental realm and enters into the real realm, and what you have believed becomes your reality. You become stupid. You become a failure. You become a freak. You have believed the lie. And because you released your faith into it, it leaves the mental realm and the emotional realm. It enters into the real realm. And finally, stage number seven. The ultimate aim of the enemy is to take you hostage where he can dominate you for the rest of your life life. That did not happen with me because right at that point, I received the baptism of the Holy Spirit and it set me free. If you've never received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, my friend, call us right now. We will pray with you. You will receive the power of the Holy Ghost. It will set you free. But those are the seven levels of oppression that work in a person's life. They are very identifiable. But when you come to 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4, the Apostle Paul tells us we can deal with these mental lies. We can deal with oppression. Listen to what he says. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. According to this verse, we have spiritual weapons and they are mighty. The word mighty is the Greek word dunata. It is from the Greek word dunamis, which pictures superhuman explosive power with enormous energy. It describes the full might of an advancing army. My friends, we don't just have little weapons. We have mighty weapons. They are mighty. And in fact, this verse says they're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. What does that mean, pulling down? Well, it's a pretty strong word. The Greek word pulling down means, listen to this, to take down to disassemble. You see, if you have wrong thoughts in your mind that have been working there for a long time, you have to disassemble them. You have to take them down. It means if needed to take them apart bit by bit, to demolish, to destroy, to dismantle, to throw down, knock down, break up, pull apart, take two pieces until nothing is left standing. It is used to picture the pulling down of the walls of a well-defended fortress. And that leads us to the word stronghold. The word stronghold, the Greek word ukaroma, which is literally the Greek word for a castle or a fortress. Now listen careful. It pictures a stronghold, a castle or a fortress with walls fortified to keep outsiders on the outside. It is the same word which describes a dreadful prison constructed deep inside a fortress that is intended to prevent a hostage or prisoner from escaping. It is a place of arrest, captivity, confinement, detention, imprisonment, or incarceration. And here's what you find. When you have a mental stronghold, <laughs> It's like a castle's been built in your brain. The devil, like a wicked king, moves into the castle. And from this high place in your life, from your mind, from your mind and your emotions, he begins dictating you. That's what the word oppression means. He begins subduing you. 
He begins telling you what to believe, what to feel, what's going to happen to you, what's not going to happen to you. And he builds that fortress so securely in your mind and emotions that it traps you like you're in a prison. Even more, those who could help you can't seem to penetrate you because the walls of the lie are so thick. You are so locked up inside that wall that when people come to you and even try to tell you the truth, you cannot hear them. They just cannot penetrate you because you are so insulated by a lie. But the Bible says we have the power to dismantle and disassemble and if need be bit by bit begin to take apart those lies that are in our minds and sometimes we have to do it piece by piece until finally that stronghold is pulled down it's broken up it is disassembled and we are free but wait the next verse says casting down imaginations the word imaginations tells us where the stronghold takes place. It takes place in the mind. The word imaginations is the Greek word logismos. The word logismos is where we get the word logic as in logical thinking. It is used to denote the logic or the reasonings of the mind. But my friend, I want to tell you there are two kinds of strongholds. The Bible calls them imaginations. What kind are there? Number one, there are logical strongholds. And number two, there are illogical strongholds. Now, you would think that the illogical stronghold would be the easiest to recognize, but not always. Sometimes a logical stronghold is hard to recognize because it is logical. That's like a person who says, well, I can't do what God's telling me to do because I don't have the money to do it. Logically, hmm, that may be the truth. But if their logic is restricting their obedience, then it's wrong. But they're bound by logic. But then there are illogical strongholds. Let me give you an example. A skinny person who thinks they're fat. That is so illogical. Every time they look in the mirror, they see a fat person. They hear a voice saying to them, oh, you've got so many rolls. Oh, you're so many fat. The truth is they are so skinny, they need to eat, but they have an illogical stronghold that is controlling them. It's reality to them because that's what that voice has been saying to them for so long. So there are two kinds of strongholds. Logical strongholds are just as real as illogical strongholds. A logical stronghold will keep you bound. It will keep you in prison. It will stop you from obeying, stop you from a life of faith. An illogical stronghold will bind you up in a wrong self-image. It will tie you up in a lie that is trying to dominate your life. But according to the Apostle Paul, we have weapons that are mighty, explosively powerful when they are released. They release the full might of an advancing army. And with the weapons of God, we can pull down, disassemble, take apart bit by bit if needed until finally we have disassembled those lies in our heads. And we can walk permanently free. We can. And when we come back in tomorrow's program, we're going to see how to demolish how to demolish, how to disassemble, how to dismantle a stronghold in your mind and in your emotions. I'll be back in just a moment, and I'm going to pray for you. What does it mean to be oppressed? How do you know if you or someone you know is oppressed? What can you do to help those whose minds and emotions are oppressed? Nearly everyone has experienced a bout of oppression or knows someone who is struggling with it right now. Wait no longer to get the answers you need. It's all right here in this five-part series, Healing the Mind and Emotions of the Oppressed. This five-part series covers what is oppression? What are the signs of oppression? What did Jesus say about oppression? How does Jesus set the oppressed free today? Available in digital or physical formats, starting at just $10, you'll learn how to walk free or how to help someone else walk into the freedom God wants for them. In addition to this teaching series, you can also get the book Sparkling Gems from the Greek Volumes 1 and 2. In these books, Rick unlocks the brilliant treasures within God's Word and shows you how to live an intimate, uncompromising life with God. In an easy-to-read devotional format, each volume of Sparkling Gems explores more than 1,000 in-depth Greek word studies and is sure to inspire and provoke you to plunge deeper into what God has for your life. Call now to order Sparkling Gems 1 for just $40 and Sparkling Gems 2 for only $45. Don't miss this special offer, Healing the Mind and Emotions of the Oppressed and Sparkling Gems from the Greek Volume 1 or 2. Call now 
or go to renner.org. Call or go online now. My friend, we need your help because our ministry is really growing. God has graciously entrusted to us the responsibility to bring teaching of the Bible to people all over the world. And people are tuning in because they feel they have found teaching they can trust. People reaching out to us for spiritual support and requesting our resources, many of which we send for free. We're doing everything we can to really reach out and strengthen people's lives. But the ministry is growing. Our Tulsa office has become insufficient. We've outgrown it. We have no room for storage. People are literally sitting all over the building. And our Moscow studio is so small for what we need because now we are doing five to seven live programs a day in multiple languages. And right now we're already in the process of building a new studio in Moscow. If you would go online there on our homepage, you'll see a link where you can read about all that we're doing in our ministry in this expansion project and how you can participate. And my friend, you really will be making a difference in somebody else's life. Our telephone is ringing with people calling for prayer to be set free from mental and emotional strongholds. And if you need prayer, call us right now or send us an email. My friend, I'm telling you, we're waiting for the phone to ring so we can put our faith together with you. God does not want you to be ruled over by those wicked lies that have been speaking to you and have been dominating you for so long. You can be set free from a logical stronghold and from an illogical stronghold. Jesus was anointed to deliver anybody oppressed of the devil, and that includes you. Call us. Let us pray with you right now for God's power to be released in your mind and in your emotions. God wants you to be whole and to be free. But I'm speaking to you from my series, which is called Healing the Mind and Emotions of the Oppressed. It's five parts. It comes in multiple formats. My friend, this teaching will liberate you or somebody that you know. And it comes with a marvelous study guide so you can study it yourself or use it to teach somebody else. We're also offering you my daily devotionals called Sparkling Gems from the Greek, number one, and Sparkling Gems from the Greek, number two. Order one or order both. It would be a great gift to give to somebody else that needs to be undergirded with the Word of God. But I want to pray for you. Father, I thank you that you designed us to be free and not to be taken hostage by the lies of the enemy. Help us to hear your word, apply it to our life, believe the right thing, and walk free in the name of Jesus. Amen. I believe that for you. Remember Ecclesiastes 8.4, where the word of a king is, there is power. Let God's word work in you today, and I'll see you tomorrow. Thank you for watching this broadcast. For more information on product resources or to learn how you can partner with this ministry, please connect with us at renner.org. Also, please be sure to visit us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. If that teaching helped you, would you please subscribe, like, and comment so more people can see it.